Well, good morning, church. We're so glad you can join us for our service today. As you can see, we are live streaming from our Upper East Coast campus. We hope that you're not just watching the service by yourself, but watching your family members, your cell members, your spiritual community. It's still not too late to get this link, send it to somebody, and share with them the service to watch today. I want to share with you this quote from Pastor Andy Stanley, one of my favorite authors, and he says this. He says that life change takes place a bit in rows and a whole lot in circles. And you can't do in rows what you can do in circles. Sometimes watching service online can be a real experience, but when we bring people on to watch together on whichever platform, on Zoom, on Facebook, or wherever you want to do so, it becomes a circle experience where you can share what God is doing in and through our lives. You can pray and support one another. Last night, we had an opportunity to catch up with our Mayalam uh, fellowship leaders, and they were saying that, wow, they could watch their service, attend the service together as a family, even though they are in different parts of the world. The online service is not meant to isolate us, but it's to connect us in a different way. So our prayer for you as a church is that we will be connected in different ways and any way possible, okay? We've got a couple of announcements before we go into the time of worship. We will also be taking communion at the end of the service, so remember to prepare our communion emblems. At the end of the service, our Zoom prayer rooms will also be open. So if you need prayer, you would like to respond to the message, you ask your cell for the link and the passcode, and join us after the service close, and the pastor team will be there to pray with and for you. We've got a couple of announcements. The first announcement is our GEMS service. It's going to be taking place on the 19th of June, 2.30pm to 4pm. Our very own sister Jenny Xiao will be sharing with us the topic, Shepherd of My Soul. As we know, Shepherd of My Soul is from Psalms 23. It's a beloved scripture for many believers as it brings comfort and encouragement in our times of trouble and pain. It's a service you don't want to miss. So join us on the 19th of June at 2.30pm by looking at the, this Facebook link or the YouTube buttons. Coming up on the following Saturday is the Woman of Purpose. They will also be having their service online on Zoom. Uh, our sister, Dede Legado, who's the founder of the Debra Project, she's going to be sharing this topic, Get to Know the Father So You Can Trust Him. You'll see on the screen the link to sign up and when you sign up for the link, they will send you the Zoom link after you have registered. So it's going to be taking place on 26 June, Saturday, 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Alright, we will be online uh, until further notice. So stay tuned for the updates on our EAG News uh, Telegram channel as well. At this point in time, we're going to collect the offering. So if you look at the screens, you will see the QR codes for our Tyson offering, our missions and our building fund. What you can do is to open your banking app, uh, scan the QR code and to enter the amount in which you want to give to the Tyson offering, the missions fund as well as the building fund. You can find the QR codes on our website as well if you would love to give uh, later on. What we are going to do right now before we have the word is we're going to have a time of worship. Wherever you are at home, at your workplaces or you know your, your friend's house, won't you just open up your hearts to the Lord today? We may be in different locations, we may be with different people, but we are still one church worshipping under one name. So I'm going to pass the time now to the worship team to lead us in a time of worship. Oh 
mirarlo For hearts that burn we see For hearts that burn with holy fear Purified in faith and deed Refiner's fire strengthen what remains So we the church will bear your light Lamp of flame, city bright King and kingdom come is what we pray We need a fresh wind The fragrance of heaven Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out A holy anointing The power of your presence Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out Cause we need a fresh wind The fragrance of heaven Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, a holy anointing, the power of your presence, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. Spirit. 
week two talk about uncharted waters and week three today we're going to be talking about the holy spirit as our invisible force god is the huge power that we all see through creation when you look around and you see the trees the sand the sea the animals you see god present in creation and you say wow god it's, that's it's so wonderful and when we think about jesus we know that he came down in physical form he's fully god and fully man but when we think about the holy spirit he can be kind of invisible to us we may have a difficulty connecting because you can't really see him you can't really touch him but he is often with us and there are different ways we can sense him there are different ways in which he speaks to us just now during the worship you know when, when Rachel was leading us I'm sure we sense something it could be as tangible as goosebumps on your skin but it could be as simple as just a peace that's upon your heart it could be words that you hear that you see flash across your mind or your eyes it could be visions and pictures that you see it could be the Holy Spirit prompting you to message or to tell someone about Jesus or about your testimony or to bring into a reminder about something that God has put into your life or something that God has promised you about the Holy Spirit speaks to us in many different ways He is the invisible force that we are encountering not just today but every single day of our lives and just some pointers for us to take note about the Holy Spirit He's equal to the Father and the Son He's all-knowing and all-powerful He is our helper and He bears witness to the truth okay and He empowers us to do many miraculous things for our good and for His glory. And so we learn that He's the invisible force that will empower us today. And there are many ways the Holy Spirit can empower us, but today we're going to look at three ways in which the Holy Spirit will empower us. The first way is that He empowers us to boldly proclaim the Gospel. Okay? He empowers us to boldly proclaim the Gospel. Many times we know in the Bible that it's the great commandment to love God and to love others. But when it comes to the great commission, it becomes the great suggestion. And we think that, oh, this is God suggesting maybe you should go to the end of the earth, maybe you should make disciples, maybe you should baptize people. No, there is a command and there's a commission for us to do so. It is not if you feel like it, it's not when you are of a certain age or we are making it in life, but as long as we call ourselves believers today, the great commission is for us to carry out, the great commission is for us to fulfill. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says this But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We look at the word and we note that uh, Jesus says, you shall be my witnesses. He didn't say you will be my apostles, my rabbis, you will be, um, you know, pastors, leaders, evangelists, worship leaders, service crew, what, whichever title or position. Jesus calls us first and foremost to be His witness. And witness, right, you just have to tell the truth as it is. There's no need to sugarcoat, there's no need to uh, go to Bible school to be the witness. You just say what God has done in and through your life. I remember a couple of years ago, I, I, I took a grab back from a CBD home and it took a while to come because it was the peak uh, hour and as I got to the grab home, uh, I think somewhere around Raffles Place uh, because there's a lot of cars, so you can see the cars are really close to each other and sometimes they, they try to cut in so that uh, you know, they can be the next in line so they can turn or they can go into the building or whichever. I noticed there was this car that's really close to my side of which the grab I was sitting. I just thought, wow, this person is really living on the edge, you know, and they are really, you know, desperate or urgent to get into the lane so that they can go wherever they need to go. So I just thought, okay, this is really close. I can see the driver, he can see me. I'm not gonna wave to him. I'm just gonna look straight and just, you know, make it make it make sure I'm home safely. But before I know it, right, there's a loud scraping sound at the side which I was on. What happened is that as my grab moved forward, the other car decided to come in and there is a clash and there's a loud scraping sound. So of course, both stand, uh, stop, you know, and uh, not really there's no fight, but they went to an alley to you know, try to settle and the grab driver asked me, hey, if, you, if there's a need to, could you be my witness to what happened today? I said, sure, I'll just say it as it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to uh, put in my own perspective. I'll say my viewpoint and we'll let um, the court or whoever uh, de decide. Uh, but thankfully, I did not have to uh, present any 
message or turn up anywhere to give bear witness. But the fact is that if I witness something, I just say objectively and we let the people decide. Sometimes we think about being a witness for Jesus, right? We are so concerned about what people will think, what people will say, you know, how they'll perceive our witnessing. That is between them and God and the Holy Spirit. Our job is to proclaim the gospel boldly as whatever it is in the Bible as well as in your life today. Maybe some of us say that, wow, but we, we weren't there 2,000 years ago. We didn't see Jesus. We didn't get to put our fingers through the holes in His hands. We didn't get to touch Him. We didn't get to eat the fish that He cooked. We, didn't, we weren't there. How can we be witness? We are witness because we have the Holy Spirit that's in us to guide us into all truth, to help us to understand the sayings of Jesus as well as the experiences that we have with God in our lives. The encounters with God helps us to authenticate our knowledge and witness about who Jesus is. And when people around start to see the transformation that takes place in your life, that is a witness and a testimony to what the gospel is doing and will be doing around as well. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be witness today. He gives us the power to share the gospel with people around and He inspires us to speak. So I want to challenge us today when it comes to the Holy Spirit being the invisible force. Don't think just about the Holy Spirit uh, helping you with what you need, but the Holy Spirit is always guiding you in what to say to other people around. Maybe as you are hearing the message, you are thinking, when was the last time I asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, can you tell me who to share the gospel with today? Our prayers often are, you know, guided a certain way, but maybe we need to redirect our prayers to say, Holy Spirit, this morning, this day, this week, this month, this year, help me to share the gospel with somebody and not share in a meek way or a weak way, but in a bold way, a confident way. Bonus doesn't always mean loud, but it just means confidence in who you believe in. Amen. So first thing, the Holy Spirit empowers us to speak His, speak the gospel, proclaim the gospel boldly. Second thing, the Holy Spirit empowers us to pray when we do not know how. Okay? He empowers us to pray when we do not know how. There are prayers or emotions that words cannot fully describe. Maybe we are faced with a difficult situation and we do not know how to pray. Maybe a good friend has lost a family member and, and when, when you're there, the friend says that, hey, you are a Christian, can you pray for us? And you're thinking, I don't even know what to say to comfort you. What more to pray? That's where we ask the Holy Spirit, empower us today. Because when we do not know how to pray, the Holy Spirit guides us on how to pray. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says this, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Romans chapter 8 basically talks about the participation of Christians in everyday suffering experienced by all of creation and how God's Spirit helps us in the season of waiting by taking our unformed prayers to the Lord. We trust God that He uses every circumstances in our lives for His purpose, that He has chosen us to be His children. Hudson Taylor said this, All God's giants have been weak men who did great things for God because they reckon on God being with them. When the Holy Spirit empowers us to pray, it is an assurance, it is a belief, it is an acknowledgement that He is with us today. Sometimes we may fail to pray because we think we are strong enough to handle life without God. It's, it's encouraging, in, like we read in the passage just now, 826, that God doesn't confront us or condemn us from being weak, but He sends His Spirit to help us in our weakness. Maybe today our prayers, like I said earlier, is guided a certain way. You say, God, you know, help us in our work, help us in our family, help us in our health, in our uh, sleep, uh, in, in the issues that we are facing, help us you know, to buy a house, help us to earn more money, whichever. Those are important prayers, necessary for sure. But maybe the Lord is teaching us to pray a bigger prayer, a wider prayer, a prayer that glorifies Him today. The Holy Spirit is a invisible force but he's not an impersonal force he is a person that helps us in our weakness he comes alongside us he supports us through our difficult situation and we should be and we must be encouraged to pray we may not fully understand the mysteries of life but the, we know that the Lord commands us to pray in every season 
the Holy Spirit encourages us with truth. He dwells in us. He takes our prayers and directs them before the Lord. Don't let the fact that you don't know how to pray discourage you from praying. We may not know, but it shouldn't stop us. That's why you say, Holy Spirit, can you guide us and help us today? Don't let the fact that prayer isn't easy discourage you from prayer. Sometimes praying can be tough because when we take the first step to say, Dear Jesus, Dear Lord or Father, whichever it is that you, you address the Lord by, is our step of crossing the line to say that, God, okay, come into my life again. Speak to me. Some of us, even when we say the first word, we break out in tears or we feel overwhelmed with emotion. And we don't know how to pray. But that's where the Holy Spirit is with us. He's our supporter and guide. Many times, you know, uh, uh, at, at, at uh, different ways of funerals, I see the family members, they break down. You know, they, they, they are overwhelmed with emotion. And it's very hard pain to see that. But it's also very encouraging to see family members that are literally supporting them, guiding them, holding them through. And that's like the Holy Spirit in our lives. Don't let the fact that your prayers don't seem to be answered stop you from praying. God's delays doesn't always equate to His denials. He may delay in answering a prayer because He's got something even greater for you in your life. But that doesn't stop us from praying because as we pray, our minds and our hearts are tuned in to the will of God. So we pray to the best of our understanding. Hopefully it's in God's will. But if it's not, that's where the Holy Spirit will guide us through. Holy Spirit will pray for us in our weakness, cause us to persevere in prayer, especially in times of trial. I shared with us you know, a couple of weeks back that uh, I went to Brazil to do ministry and in Brazil they speak Portuguese. So uh, that's not something I speak. I speak English, Mandarin and tongues. So when we were there, there's like 20, 30 of us uh, speaking English. There's about 10 over translators and of uh, different proficiency levels. So during the ministry time, we form one line across and people will come up for prayer for whatever need that they have, you know, because sometimes we don't know what the person is saying, but they just come to the front. And if you are able to get a translator, you will know what you are praying for exactly. If you do not get a translator, wow, that's why you really have to trust the Holy Spirit to guide you through. I remember there was one time the person came up to me and I just said, <laughs> I said to English, uh, is there anything I can pray for you? Then he just looked at me blankly and I just like, mm, okay, I'll do this. <laughs> so pray for you And he just started speaking a lot of things in Portuguese And I couldn't get a translator I just thought, okay Here's what we're going to do We're just going to pray <laughs> you know? So I just tried to signal him to, to close his eyes And I just prayed for him in the spirit And I just prayed for him in the English you know? and, and of course, with all stories The testimony should be you know, uh, we, uh, He was healed you know, and, and things became better And he was made well But sometimes we don't know the outcomes of our prayers Sometimes we don't know what is the effect or the impact, but it doesn't stop us from praying today. You may not see the outcome, the impact in your life, but it doesn't stop the Holy Spirit from empowering you to pray when you do not know how or you do not know when to pray. I want to encourage us today, wherever you are, whenever there's a need, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you as to what to pray for. Alright, so point number one is that we've got to the Holy Spirit empowers us to boldly proclaim His gospel. Second one, for us to pray when we do not know. And thirdly, is to live righteously. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live righteously. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is not for us to live better Christian lives, but to live the Christian life better. Okay, it's not to live better Christian lives, but to live the Christian lives better. When we say living better Christian lives, there is the notion that we are depending on our own strength to make it through this life, to be a pleasing sacrifice to God. Sure, there is that decision-making process which the Holy Spirit guides us, but at the end of the day, the Christian life is made possible because we have the Holy Spirit with us, walking with us every single step of the way, living righteously. We don't try to be righteous on our own, but we are able to live righteously because of the Holy Spirit who prompts us, who convicts us, who strengthens us no matter how many times we fail. Maybe this morning, some of us may have stumbled in your anger, in sexuality, in your emotion, whichever area. But you know what? As you are listening to the message today, the Holy Spirit is convicting you, prompting you, strengthening you, and cleansing you to live righteously. Amen? Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says this, So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Okay? 
we may read this verse and use it as a get out of jail free card at crucial moments. Or when we stumble, we may say, the Holy Spirit did not help us. While we look at Galatians chapter 5 today, we know that's where we learn about the fruit of the Spirit. It focuses on how God's Spirit gives those in Christ the power to serve others in love. We must allow the Holy Spirit to lead us today because when we don't, our selfish nature will take over. And when our selfish nature takes over, we will begin to live in sin and enter all kinds of sinful lifestyles. When we live by the Spirit, on the other hand, right, we gain more than just not being able to live in sin. Sometimes we think living righteously, right, is just not living in sin. While that is true, that's not always the case. Living righteously is so much more than not living in sin. There's so many areas in which the Holy Spirit is empowering us to live righteously, to love God, to serve God, to, to love the people around. And when we look at that passage, right, there's a key word. It says, walk. Walking is a conscious process that has to go on as we do our daily activities. We, we may not be like a child in which that we are taught to walk, you know, hold the hands, you know, and take a step by step. Because walking is a very natural part of our lives. When we see a destination, we're like, okay, I'm going to go to this place. We naturally walk to it. We walk to it in varying speeds, you know, with varying uh, intensity, with varying focus. When we walk around, right, the walk in the Spirit right, is a way of life. It's not a short stroll. Some of us walk in the Holy Spirit for two seconds and you say, yes, that's enough. I'm going to walk myself for the rest of the week, for the rest of the day. But walking in the Spirit is a way of life. Walking right means to live. The Greek tense of it indicates that we are to keep on walking in the Spirit as a cause of life. Today, every step that we take, right, do we walk in the Spirit? Are we conscious of the Holy Spirit? Or are we just conscious of ourselves and what we want to do? I believe many of us today are on different apps to track our steps. You know, you may have an Apple Watch, a Xiaomi Watch, you may have a Fitbit or a Garmin, you may be on the Healthy365 app or Lumine Health app, whichever app you're on, you're counting the number of steps that you are taking each day. Of course, experts say it's between 10 to 12,000 uh, every day that you can have an active and healthy lifestyle, right? But Maybe every day, can I challenge you from today, when you look at your watch, the number of steps that you take, out of this number of steps, how many steps are you walking with the Lord today? Maybe you do an average of 10,000, 12,000 steps today. Out of these 10,000, 12,000 steps, how many steps are you conscious to the prompting of the Holy Spirit? To where and what He's guiding you in your life today? It's sometimes we think the walk of life, the walk of spirit is something very abstract while wow, it's very cheap, you know, or Christian theology is only for some people who go to Bible school or, you know, they are leaders or pastors or they are mature believers. But actually, the faith is very simple. You just walk by the Spirit. Walking is also a command. The Holy Spirit will not automatically work in our lives. We need to invite Him into our lives today. It is a decision that we allow Him to come into our lives to lead us. Spirituality is not being passive. It involves decision. There is an onus on us to depend on the Holy Spirit for guidance and the power in the Christian life. Walking is a decision. Today, church, I want to challenge us. Will you walk in the Spirit today? Will you make a decision to live for the Lord today? To let the Holy Spirit empower you to proclaim His gospel Body, the Holy Spirit to empower you to pray when you do not know how. The Holy Spirit for you to live righteously. You notice when we talk about living righteously, I didn't focus a lot on the sin area. Yes, important for sure. We know what are the sins that we need to look out for, but often not we forget what it means to live righteous. And the Holy Spirit empowers us and guides us on how to do so today. Walking is activity. Is not a defensive or passive stand. We enter actively into God's will by resting into the power of the Holy Spirit today. When you are in your cell groups, 
when you're in your community, when you're in your prayer closet, when you're reading your Bible, when you're listening to the worship song, there is activity that must take place. There is decisions that must be made. Just now when the worship team was leading us, you know, you have to decide to raise your hands. You have to decide to raise your voices. You have to decide to kneel down. You have to decide to open your hearts. You can't always wait for the environment to be perfect, for all circumstances to be well, then you worship God. God calls us to put on a garment of praise upon the spirit of heaviness today. And it means it's a decision, but it's a decision that we do not take by ourselves, but we have the Holy Spirit to empower us to do so, to strengthen us, to prompt us. And when we take that step, to lead us every step of the way. Church, I don't want us to just watch the service and like, wow, that's a great work, but nothing changes in our lives. I'd rather our service be five minutes, but the rest of our lives, we are walking closely with the Holy Spirit today. Today, when after this, this, this message or the service is over, don't go straight to having lunch. Don't go straight to your usual Sunday activity. Don't go straight to just status quo. Take a moment, write down, pray with somebody, discuss about it what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about in these three areas. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back on and to lead us in a couple of chorus. And as they do so, think about the three areas we talked today. Empowered to proclaim the Lord's gospel. Empowered to pray when we do not know how. Empowered to live righteously. And as the team leads us today, would you open up your hearts and say that, Lord, empower me in this area not my will, but yours be done today on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. I'm going to pass the time to the team to lead us. Spirit sound rushing with fire of God for within Holy Ghost freedom thus we As we repent, turn from sin, revival ember smoldering, breath of God, fed us into flame. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out.
of your presence. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Amen. Father, it's really the, the cry of our hearts to pour your spirit out on us, God. Lord, we, we thank you that the Holy Spirit is not limited by a building or a structure, but the Holy Spirit is with us everywhere, anywhere, any time of the day, wherever we go. God, we ask that you will empower us to share your gospel boldly. Lord, if we are at home with our family members who are uh, yet to know you, God, we ask that in the coming days, give us that bonus to share with them, to pray with them. Lord, we don't want to uh, move on from this earth without them. We ask that you will help us to see the urgency of times to share with them. God, we ask that you also teach us how to pray when we do not know how to do so. Whether it's in life, difficult circumstances, whether it's in scenarios where we, we are unable to comprehend with our, our mind, you will just lead us and guide us. Holy Spirit, we ask that you help us to live righteously, not by our own strength, not by our own will, not by our own doings, but we want to partner with you to live righteously today. Speak to us, lead us, guide us every step of the way. Lord, help us to focus on you, the do's instead of the do-nots. We ask that you just do a new work, that as this is the first week of, a, of June, you know, there will be a new month and new beginnings for many of us. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. What we're going to do right now is going to partake communion together as a church, wherever you are. We are gathered under one name, the name of Jesus. We are one church, but we are in multiple locations. So as you prepare the communion emblems, you know, you have the bread or the biscuit that's in your hands, you have the cup, whether it's it juice or, or wine or water, whichever it is, you know, let's bring it to wherever you are and we're going to partake communion together as one. Jesus implemented the Holy Communion through the Last Supper and he shared this with his disciples. He took the bread and he told them, this is my body that is broken for you. He took the cup that is saying that this is a new covenant in me and as often as we drink and we eat, we do this in remembrance of him. So when we take today, we are called, we will recall and remember what the Lord has and still is doing on the cross for us, taking away our sins as you want to bring healing into our lives today. So all over, wherever you are, won't you just partake uh, the bread or the biscuit together, the body of Christ. Amen. We, as we will be parting out the cups, we want to read to you from Isaiah chapter 50, 53, verse 5. It says, But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. So we just remember as we drink of the cup today, this is the blood of Jesus that we have a new covenant in him today, that our salvation is not by works, but it's really by the blood of Jesus. Shall we drink together? Amen. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to close us in prayer. After the closing prayer, you can feel free to head to the Zoom uh, prayer rooms. If you need prayer, our pastors will be there praying with and for you. Let's pray. Jesus, we just thank you for all that you've done for us on the cross. Lord, thank you for um, your body that's broken, for your blood that is shed. Lord, we thank you that we have a new covenant in you and it's not by our own works, but it's truly by your grace, through faith that we are saved. Lord, we ask that as we go from this place, well, from wherever we are, Lord, we ask that you will lead us and guide us in a very clear way. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Guide our discussions um, in our cell groups after the service or uh, when we meet each other again. Holy Spirit, put upon our hearts, comfort us, give us peace if that's what we need. We don't want to live this life without you, by our own strength, but we want to live it with you and for you. So we thank you, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Well, that's all we have for today's service. You can join us again next week, 11am on Facebook. Till then, God bless you, take care, and we'll see you soon.